this man who I had known for 20 years did such a lovely job on my podcast that I said to him, I would love to do a podcast for the bereaved community, and I think you're the person to do it. Hello, and welcome to Brief But Still Me, the podcast formerly known as Heart to Heart with Michael. Today, we're celebrating five years on the air, providing support for and empowering the bereaved community. Our program is in two parts and recorded literally on two separate continents. Anna Jaworski, our executive producer, and I had the privilege to participate in the Podcast Movement Annual Convention in Nashville, Tennessee, where we recorded our impressions of our first five years of production. Later, we spoke with some of our guests, writers, and producers who have been with us for much of that time. This is a bonus edition of our program, and we'll be taking a look at where we've been and where we're headed in the future. So without any further delay, join us now for our conversation from Nashville, Tennessee. Welcome, one and all. This is a special edition of Bereaved But Still Me, celebrating the end of our fifth year. I I just can't believe it, Michael. With me is executive producer... Mother, owner, general friend of the program, (laughs) the spirit behind the Hearts Unite the Globe podcast network, Anna Jaworski. Not with us today are people who really need to be here, so we'll... Well, so many people. In five years of putting together a podcast, there are so many people. Of course, all of the wonderful guests, but all of the people behind the scenes, the board for Hearts Unite the Globe. We can't possibly talk about bereaved but still me or heart to heart with michael as it was formerly known four, four years. without talking about our producer nancy jensen who's mm-hmm. also our graphic artist who has kindly made not one but two sets of logos and banners as we changed our <laughs> name over time i mean the three of us for sure have been the core but we also have to mention sherry turner yeah. who was our yeah. first dedicated writer to this podcast yeah. and not to mention all of the other people there, there are too many to remember there are so many amazing people who have helped out on this podcast over the last five years but what a celebration we have right now right michael and it is because we are profoundly lucky to have a board that lets us do our job absolutely we were originally supposed to talk to families of of children with congenital heart defects correct and we do we do but and we do but we have found (laughs) so much more to talk about yeah And that grief is so universal and that grief affects everybody. And we, as I like to say, we've had recently had a guest who was a therapist and she said many times that everybody is grieving something, that grief is so many different things. It's not even necessarily associated with death. Right. She herself. There are so many different things that you can be grieving. I'll I'll borrow from her story. She was abused as a child Mm -hmm. and she grieves the loss of her direction the loss of her dreams everything she wanted gone she's found other ways to do things and been very successful but there is still a hole there and that's grief and when you look at it that way suddenly we are a very universal program we can talk to everybody we talk to anybody that's so true it's almost as though everybody that i talk to when i tell them that i'm the executive producer for this program they have a story And I think that's one of the things that we've enjoyed over the last five years is discovering what people's different stories are. So for those of you who do not know, all of this started about six years ago when I asked a dear, dear friend of mine named Michael Lieben to come on my podcast known as Heart to Heart with Anna because I knew that he was an American abroad and he was in Israel. At that time, I was doing themes for my show, and my theme was congenital heart defects around the globe. So I wanted to talk to people in different countries to find out what their experiences were like, and not just what it was like in that country necessarily, but just to have a a universal flavor, just like what we're talking about with Bereaved But Still Me. And when I talked to Michael, something magical happened. (laughs) And this this man who I had known for 20 years, did such a lovely job on my podcast that I said to him, I would love to do a podcast for the bereaved community, and I think you're the person to do it. And I'll let you pick up the story from there. Anna said, I would like to do a program for the bereaved community, but I'm not bereaved. Would you pick that up and and do it? And I asked, how many do you want? And Anna said, I want to do a series of 12, one a month for a year. That sounded like a lot to me. And I said, 
I'll give you three. And if I'm still alive after three, then we'll do all 12. And I remember when we were recording the third one, I mentioned that. I remember talking about it when we were off mic that, okay, this is three, so I guess we're going to go. And now we're celebrating the end of our fifth year. Which is just amazing to me that we've made it that far. There were so many false starts with Michael and me working together. <laughs> I met him way, way, way long time ago when the internet was young and we still had dial-up. Can you do that that special sound, Michael, for dial-up? <laughs> Said you knew you were past all this static and oh my gosh, I'm connected to the world. Once you were in, you were in. It was so until you were amazing. out. Until, until, you well, off, until yeah. they dropped you. <laughs> No. <laughs> you had to dial back in over 20 years ago. Over 30 years ago when I was a student in television, they said one day you'll be able to sit anywhere in the world and share information for editing. And we all said, okay, yeah, all right. All I know. Time. You record in Texas. I record in Texas. And Nancy's in Arizona. Arizona. And I sit in Jerusalem and we record. And then our guest is, we don't know where. We don't know where half the time. We anywhere, which yeah. is really... And then Anna sends it all to me for editing. And I send it all back to Anna. It's up on the air. And it's nothing. it's nothing. And we're constantly working all around the globe, which is just so exciting. Which wreaks havoc with production meetings. It does. Oh, my goodness. For me, they're 9 o'clock, and for you, they're, they're 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Right. And 11 a.m. for Nancy. Well, depending on what time of year it is, noon. because noon. in Arizona, they have their own special relationship with time zones. Because they're special. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy and Michael and I met. Over 20 years ago, thanks to an, a group called Chin, and ah. Mona Barmish was in charge of that, and they had a listserv. And for those of you who are too young to know what a listserv is, it's where you get emails back and forth, and you're actually excited when... Email? You got mail. Y you mean somebody could write it somewhere in the world and I would get it a few minutes later? It was just so exciting. <gasps> it was so exciting. And so that there was a group called PD Heart, and Mona Barmish with Chin took that over and made it her own and brought people from all over the world together for the first time ever. And we realized we are not alone. And it was really an opportunity for us to become friends with people we had never seen. It was the first time ever for us to find other heart parents. It was almost exclusively heart parents. And now these our children have grown up and they're adults <laughs> themselves, which is just so exciting because... Some of them read announcements for our programs. <laughs> they do. Some of them interview us, some which of them is are guests. really exciting. So and some of them are my guests. My kids have all been guests on yeah. your program. Absolutely. It's been yeah. such an amazing experience. That's kind of the origin story for Bereave But Still Me, which was formerly known as Heart to Heart with Michael. And one of the reasons why we changed the name, for those of you who are wondering why we might have done that, is because... Heart to Heart with Michael, although it seemed like a natural progression from Heart to Heart with Anna to do Heart to Heart with Michael, it didn't really tell people that it was a bereavement podcast, and all the good names in podcasting with the word grief were taken. <laughs> grief, grieving. You have no idea. <laughs> so we... We really did a lot of research, and we decided... We, we almost came up with, I can't bereave, it's not great. Yeah, that was Michael. <laughs> Michael with his great sense of humor. <clears throat> you know what? A sense of humor is really important, and if you want to listen to a really good podcast, you can listen to the one with Dawn Fuller, where she's actually known as the Laugh Lady of Canada, and she talks about bereavement, but she talks about the healing power of laughter. And... That's just one of the many topics that we've covered on Bereaved But say, Still Me. It's a very serious topic, and we have some very serious conversations with some very serious people. But for me personally, if I didn't have the ability to find humor, if I didn't have the ability to laugh, I would have been gone long ago. But what I found really interesting was when we decided that it was time to rebrand, it was time to change our name so that we would be more easily found in the in different searches, directories yeah. and the different searches on Google. We put it out there to all of you, to our listeners, we and did. we said, we what did. do you all think? And we gave you a list of different titles that we had brainstormed about, and it was pretty close. And Bereaved But Still Me just kind of eked out at the top, and now it feels so natural. It's almost hard to remember being hard to hard with Michael. Also, I can't think of it not being a relevant topic for almost every conversation we've ever had, because we always try to talk to people about who they are and where they've come from and where they think they're going and what they want to be and who they want to be. And we also talk about the need 
or the obligation in a situation where you're bereaved, you become responsible for that person's memory. And you become responsible to present that person to others who maybe didn't know that person. And then that's their legacy. And I think for those of us who are bereaved, knowing that part of that person lives on, their story lives on, their message lives on, something about them lives on, Mm -hmm. is what brings us so much comfort. And if you remember, in our second year, the theme was a celebration of life. I loved that theme. I just loved that theme. And I felt like... That was the theme where we really came together as a team as well. The first year, we were still on such a steep learning curve, learning about each other, learning about putting a podcast out. But then by the second year, it felt like everything was a well-oiled machine. That's one of the things that I'm, that I'm really proud of. As a production, we, we are a well-oiled machine. We have a workflow that, that works, that cooks. We know what we're doing. And it has been very helpful so that we've been able to depend on that framework of how to do things in order to go out and find people. We can spend more time with people. And that brings us to where we are today in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm so excited that we're at Podcast Movement 2021. We're in the HubSpot portable podcasting booth. It's just amazing that they have set this up for us. I love this studio. I don't mind hearing the sound outside because we sort of have a background of where we are. Yeah. We're in a nice crowded place and it's really beautiful. Lots there and are lots 2, of people. There are 2,000 people here <laughs> at this podcast conference, which is pretty amazing to me. You get the sense that we're all trying to get back to normal. And in podcasting, what we're doing here, we're doing networking, but we're also learning about the trade of podcasting. And that's really important because you can't be a podcaster and be an effective podcaster without knowing what's going on in the podcasting world and seeing how you can improve. And that's something that Michael brought to me with Heart to Heart with Anna. When I brought Michael into Heart Unite the Globe as one of our volunteers, I knew I was getting a quality, brilliant man who would help me make my podcast better. And I can definitely say that my podcast has upped its ante ever since Michael's been involved. You know, it's interesting because a lot of people think that, oh, I'll get a microphone and I'll just turn it on and I'll be a podcaster. And I was talking to some a very nice young lady today, one of the exhibitors. She said, I've got a podcast too. And that's nice. And I said, well, what do, you want to, what do you want to say? She said, I want to bring a happy message and be nice to people. And, and I hope she can make that work. But it's a lot of work. It's a lot it of work. It is a lot of work, which is why you have podcast fade. And I even saw somebody had a... Yeah. A banner at one of the booths. Are you afraid of podcast fade? We've experienced it personally at Hug. Unfortunately, one of the reasons why we lost that is that because we also lost the star. One of the we stars. Lost, we lost David. And, and I, we would be remiss not to mention David absolutely. here. Absolutely. David Franco is one of those other people who was behind Heart to Heart with Michael and was a big part of helping Hug to grow. And for those of you don't, that don't know, Hug, Hearts Unite the Globe, is a nonprofit organization that pays all the bills so that we can do these podcasts, so that we can have a wonderful website. May, may they live forever. Brenda Vignaroli is our webmaster. She's another one of those people who's behind the scenes. We don't see her very much. She's been on Heart to Heart with Anna. We probably need to have her on Heart to Heart with Michael. The bereaved but still bo- me. Bereaved but still <laughs> me. The podcast formerly known as Heart to Heart with Michael because she has some interesting stories to share there as well but she's behind the scenes we don't see her a lot we don't but we feel her a lot we feel her all the time anything she does affects it ripples through the system absolutely and anytime we're like hey Brenda do you think that you could do this or do you think you could do that boom within 24 hours she does it I don't know how she does it she's amazing she's very 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 quick very efficient very nice so we've done five years of bereave but still me which (laughs) I still feel like that just happened in a heartbeat how did that happen so how, yeah, how, fast? Did we get, how did we get to be five years older i don't know it, it's amazing to me and i know because you remain the same i'm 62 but you haven't changed <laughs> <laughs> oh honey i have changed because in the last five years i've become an oma well, and so i have a brand new title that. and that is probably one of the most exciting things that ever happened to me in my life but let's talk about some of the other changes that we've seen in the last five years. And let's talk about some of the fun things that have happened to you, Michael, in the last five years. Being a podcaster, what are some of the most enriching experiences you've had as a podcaster? That's a good question. The program is guest-driven. I'm just here. 
Okay, I, I hope to facilitate a conversation. In some conversations, I'm much more active, and in others, I'm much less active. It depends really on the guest, and we've had some amazing guests. Coming up soon, we're going to have some stunningly amazing guests. We have one on the air right now. Absolutely. I think one of the things that I appreciate as the executive producer of Bereaved But Still Me is that people have allowed themselves to be vulnerable with yeah, you. Yeah, that's for sure. They open up to you. They share some of their most painful experiences. But, but I'm just lucky when that happens. And most lovely. No, you're not lucky. You're a good, active listener. You care about your guests. Uh, I'm and sorry. And I think what, that what, the guests... What did you say? I'm sorry. I, I think the guests... <laughs> feel that you care for them and Michael does something that's kind of unique that not all podcasters do Michael almost uniformly insists on having a pre-interview and in the pre-interview Nancy and the guest and Michael and I are all in the studio together and we just get to know each other and it's an opportunity for us to feel out the topic that we're talking about and we ask the guest how do you want to talk about this? What do you want us to help For you sure. share? Sure. What is your message? And I think by creating that podcast specifically for them, we don't have a cookie cutter Yeah, there's no feeling program. that they're coming in, they're going to get shot with three questions and have to leave. Right. Uh, it's totally and different. By the time they come in, we usually have about a week between the pre-interview and the interview. When they come back, it's like old friends. It is. Yeah. It feels like we're old friends, and yet... You always manage to pop in at least one or two new questions based on what they respond to you yeah. because we don't have the interview in a pre-interview. The pre-interview is just a chance for us to get to know each other, but Michael doesn't know the full answer until the next week. I don't necessarily know the full person until we've met. Everybody's grief is individual, and I can't tell you how to grieve. I can't tell you what to do, but, and it's important, there are a lot of lines of similarity between us and we can latch on to those lines and that enables us to share and talk about our experiences and if we do nothing else on the program we share absolutely because we believe that grief shared is grief lightened and we are not professionals we are not psychologists we're not, we're not, counselors. We're not counselors we don't do it and and we want to make it very clear i'm not a doctor and i don't play one on tv but when we can share from our personal experiences, when we can tell people what we've been through, and they can say, yeah, I relate to that, I see that something similar in my story, it helps people feel like they are not alone, which is really very important. Which is the whole theme behind Heart to Heart with Anna, and why I knew that Heart to Heart with Michael, Bury But Still Me, was just really gonna be, an, really going to be an extension of Heart to Heart with Anna. My tagline is, you are not alone. Right. We knew that the bereaved community needed something similar, but Michael came up with his own really cool tagline after season one. Do you remember what it is? Yes, I Can did. you tell us? Moving on is not moving away. And that is something that has been honed over the last five years and has become so important because while we've been doing this podcast, we have been actively learning about bereavement, about grief, and about the different stages that you go through. And because of some of that, we've learned terms like post-traumatic growth. Right. Who knew, right? Right. I didn't know that there was a name. Who for... knew that you can actually farm something positive out of trauma? Right. right. You can grow from trauma. You can grow from trauma. And I think that's definitely something that Nancy and Michael and I have done. Absolutely. And we hope that all of Absolutely. our listeners have also been able to experience that and that if you're wanting to share your story with us, that you'll <laughs> contact us. You can Please. write to Nancy at Bereaved But Still Me. With that, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us. It's a special privilege for me here to be broadcasting from the United States. From the United States. We're from both Nashville, in the same... Tennessee, we're actually literally in the same, in the room, same booth. At the in the same, same room. time. <laughs> We've only done that twice. You are listening to Bereaved But Still Me. If you have a question or comment that you would like addressed on our program, please send an email to Michael Lieben at michael at bereavedbutstillme.com. That's michael at bereavedbutstillme.com. If you've enjoyed listening to this program, please visit our website, heartsunitetheglobe.org, and make a contribution. This program is a presentation of Hearts Unite the Globe and is part of the Hug Podcast Network. 
Hearts Unite the Globe is a nonprofit organization devoted to providing resources to the congenital heart defect community to educate, empower, and enrich the lives of our community members. If you would like access to free resources pertaining to the CHD community, please visit our website at congenitalheartdefects.com. For information about CHD, hospitals that treat CHD survivors, summer camps for CHD families, and much, much more. This content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. The opinions expressed in the podcast are not those of Hearts Unite the Globe, but of the hosts and guests, and are intended to spark discussion about issues pertaining to congenital heart disease or bereavement. Our guests today are Matt Creedon, Nancy Jensen, Sherry Turner, and Julia Wagner, all of whom have a special connection with the program. Matt, I want to start with you. Thank you for coming back on Breathe But Still Me. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for having me back. It was an honor to be chosen to participate in this special episode. Well, thank you. I can only tell you it was very easy for us to make that choice. Matt, we wanted to have you on this anniversary special with us because you were not only an excellent guest with a compelling story, but also because you became a volunteer. You assist us by editing transcripts of our programs. So what brought you to the family as a volunteer? After I participated in the podcast, Heart to Heart with Michael, I wanted to try to give back a little bit to this community of parents and other people that have lost children. Mm -hmm. Uh, Helping with the transcripts was a way to do that. Even though it's been a little difficult trying to find time for this, uh, it's helped me. And it's also helped for me to hear the other people's stories as I'm doing the transcripts. We've said many, many times on the program that grief shared is grief lightened. Do you feel that reading other people's stories has been helpful to you as much as telling your stories has been helpful to others? Yes, I'm hoping that my story has been helpful to others. But yes, it is helpful to know that uh, I'm not alone. Uh, None of us are alone in this journey. I can tell you that it has been helpful because your story in particular comes back to me all the time. Some of the descriptions that you gave of that morning about the sky opening up, having been raining all morning, and perhaps God reaching down and and helping, that's with me every day. Tell me a little bit about your other son. Asa, he's 32 years old now. Uh, He was born with a a coarctation of the aorta. He had surgery at about two weeks old, but he's doing fine now, and uh, he was a tremendous big brother to his brother, uh, Chase. He was there for everything. He kind of took a back seat at times as well. That was that was a difficult part yeah. of the whole process was making sure Asa didn't get left, left behind. Well, thank you very, very much for joining us. I know you have other things that you need to get to, but it's always a pleasure to relive a moment or to speak again with a guest who has been so powerful for us. And you really have been. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you very much for having me, and I really appreciate the opportunity. Our pleasure. Thank you. Sherry, welcome back to Bereaved But Still Me. It has been a long, long time. You've been a writer for us. You've been one of our earliest, earliest guests. Yes. Welcome back. Happy to see you. Happy to see you, too. Um, Thanks for having me. I'm really honored to be here, and I've been thinking about you guys quite a bit. Now, you were the very first script writer for our program, and we loved having you write scripts during season one. Life found other things for you to do. We're happy for you, and we're also sad that you're not currently on the team. Tell us why you wanted to write for us in the first place. What brought you in? Anna and I have been friends for a long time, and she was a a speaker at uh, the CHD Awareness Day event in Massachusetts that I coordinated, and she's always been a mover and a shaker, shall we say, uh, about this is true. Um, t- taking care of the uh, congenital heart defect community. I knew she would do a great job on the bereaved community as well. And she was very sensitive to our needs. And I felt like it, it was a quality thing to be a part of. So what are you up to now these days? Well, I recently finished exploring the option of becoming a nurse. Um, Mm -hmm. I was in school for a while, but for various reasons, including physical, it didn't work out. And my hat's off to anybody who is a nurse because that is a demanding, demanding job and um, thankless too. So anybody that can do it, great. But I am uh, moving on to, I I feel like I've come full circle. I'm going back to childcare. Oh, lovely. 
Lovely, lovely. And maybe with a little less pressure, not that child care is not pressured, but with a little less pressure, not being in school, not being a nurse, perhaps you can find your way back to bereaved but still me. That's what I'm hoping. Oh, it would be delightful to have you back. So thank you for joining us. I know that you too have somewhere else to be. And thank you for stopping by and, and helping us out here with this program. Oh, thank you for having me. I'd like to talk a little bit with Nancy Jensen. Welcome back again, again, again on our program. Producer, art director. And I know it sounds funny, but yes, radio has art directors. Nancy, we wanted to have you on this anniversary special with us because you were a founding member of the podcast and you've been a part of the heart and soul of the podcast. What made you want to join us way back when? And what is it that kept you here all this time? I'm reminded of the bit in Horse Feathers where Groucho Marx mugs the camera and says, look, folks, I have to be here. You can wait in the lobby. Why are you still with us after all this time? What keeps you with us? Why? And, and we love you, but why would anybody in their right mind want to spend five years with us in this project? Well, you said right mind, and I think that, <laughs> <laughs> that answers that question. <laughs> so in the beginning, I heard that Michael Lieben was going to be a host of a bereavement podcast and he wanted me as his first guest. This is true. So <laughs> I said, okay. And then, well, I was helping working on, on the uh, art for the labels and the different things. And then before I knew it, I was all of a sudden called the uh, producer, and here I am. I absolutely love working with you and Anna. I also feel like this is a way that I can honor my daughter's legacy of hope and love and giving to others and helping others. So that's a lot of the reasons why I've stayed. I think we need to point out also, why did I want you as our very first guest? And that's because of the time in the moments, the, the days when I was losing my daughter, for those who remember what a listserv is, we used to have a group called PD Heart. And we would be writing email to this group every day. And where I was, I had no access to email, but I did have a telephone. And I was reporting everything to you. And as I said it word for word, it came out a half a day later in an email. And you were our voice for that group in those really difficult days. It's hard to forget that kind of assistance. It's hard to forget that kind of person who could be there for you. And you've done that many, many times, not just for me. I know in your own personal life, you've been there for many, many people. It's what I do. And I was honored to be able to be there for you in your deepest, darkest hour and for your family. That was just two years after Jessica passed away. Mm -hmm. And so I had been through it, even though we each deal with grief differently. I mean, we had been friends online for years and years and years. One of the things that we've talked about a lot last year was about post-traumatic growth and the ways that we come out of our trauma, sometimes bigger, better, stronger. We wish maybe we didn't have to do that, but we do. So how has working with the podcast helped you with your personal growth? Oh, it's helped tremendously. I've always been one, like you said, to, to reach out and help others. And I did that in the CHD community for many years. Mm -hmm. So it's really been a blessing to be able to help a lot more people. I feel like it's honoring her legacy. She's just radiated love and hope and tried to encourage everybody. And so I feel like I'm learning to be more like her. <laughs> We all talk about our kids as how wonderful they were. We all like to be as good as the memory of them. And I think you have done that. I think that's who you are. That's probably why I turned to you in those days. And I know other people have to. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me back. And um, <laughs> enjoy this is, technically, <laughs> this is technically your fourth appearance with us. So that, uh, technically, that's yes. a record. That's a record. <laughs> I want to turn now to Julia. Your episode has had more hits than anybody. You have clearly touched many, many lives with your story. What did it mean to you to come onto our program and share Lizzie's story with us and our listeners? It was such a wonderful experience. And I really enjoyed it being able to know that our experience might be able to help someone else when it's such a difficult thing and how to keep those memories alive and connect with our loved ones when they've passed. 
and to help our family navigate through those difficult times. It meant a lot to be able to share some of the things that we did that helped us and know that just maybe it would help others in their journey as well. Well, I'm glad you said that because I remember there was at least one way that was very special to my memory, how you memorialize Lizzie every year. And it's particularly pertinent during the holidays and even all year long. So why don't you tell us about that and what your friends and family do to help remember Lizzie every year? Well, it started on her first Christmas and we were getting ready to decorate and I was hanging the stockings and I got to her stocking and I just stood and stared at it. Mm. And I didn't know what to do with the stocking. Um, did I, I couldn't bear to not put it up, but I couldn't bear to see it sit empty for the season. I sat down and I hugged her stocking and I just cried and I tried to figure out what to do. And all of a sudden it came to me that perhaps what we should do is to fill her stocking with gifts of kindness and service to other people. And so I hung up her stocking, sat down and told our kids and my husband about the idea And then we messaged family and friends um, about what we wanted to do, that we wanted to fill Elizabeth's stocking with acts of kindness. And it was so special to have all these acts of kindness come in all through December. And we just kept adding slips of paper into her stocking. People would email us and we'd print them off and put them in. And then on Christmas Day, when everything was done with all of our other children, we took her stocking down and we sat and we read through all these marvelous things. And it helped us feel so connected. And then in the following years, we decided, well, why should we only do this during December? So we've encouraged people that when they do acts of kindness through the year to send them to us anytime so that we can add them to Elizabeth's stocking. And it has been such a special way. She was so service oriented, loved to do sweet, kind things for other people. And it's been a way for us to just feel connected, not only with her, but with each other. Well, I remember saying at the time, it's not that we simply want to remember our loved ones. I think we have an obligation to remember them. And in that way, to make them known to those who didn't know them and to make them known in a way that their memory is of some value. And I believe this is exactly right, what you've done. It's a wonderful thing. I hope People listening now will get a kick and think about doing something similar. It doesn't have to be for Christmas. It doesn't have to be for a holiday. It doesn't have to have a stocking. Just remember them and say their name, but remember them and remember them well. And I think that's one of the biggest lessons I've personally taken from the last five years. Yeah, it's been a wonderful opportunity. And I think sometimes we're afraid to remember And we avoid sometimes bringing those memories because we're afraid of the hurt that might come with it and the sadness. And we have learned over the years that the more remembered, the more joy we have in the memory. And even our youngest children who didn't really know her, he was only 18 months when she passed away. He has been able to have a connection that he wouldn't have otherwise. So I agree absolutely to remember, remember those loved ones and keep them close. Thank you. I think that's perfect. And that's a great way for us to go out. I want to thank everybody again who's been here. I want to thank Matt and Nancy and Sherry and Julia. And of course, Anna, who is the mother of this program, without whom there wouldn't be a program. I want to thank Hearts Unite the Globe for giving us the freedom to do a program that isn't only about children with heart defects. What we do, I believe, is important. What we do, I believe, helps other people to remember their loved ones in a way that lightens some of the pain. Grief is an important thing. Grief helps us work our way through life. Grief is a part of who we've become. And our little community here has picked up shoals of volunteers and guests over the last five years, some of them more famous, some of them not famous. None of that matters. What matters is that all of us are members of a grieving community, and we look for ways to reach out to each other and expand that community so that we can share our grief. And I hope that's what we're doing. I know personally that has worked very well for me these last five years. Let's not forget the reason that I'm here is because I'm bereaved of a daughter. It's important for me that all of us know that we can look to each other and turn to each other. And that's why we're here. And I want to thank you, Michael, because I knew you would be the perfect host and you haven't let me down for five (laughs) years. You've had Nancy and me laughing and 
crying at the same time as we go through and plan these programs and work hard to make a difference in our corner of the world. So thank you for the laughter and the tears and just for the tenacity to stick with it through <laughs> a lot, a lot of months and weeks and planning and to do less. So I want to thank everybody for coming back to Breathe But Still Me today and celebrating five years of programming with us. We're very happy that you've been a part of our journey and hope that you will continue to work with us to help the Brief community. Before we go, I want to add two more things. The music you're hearing right now in the background was provided during the last five years by Miles Schweitzer, an adult CHD warrior. Miles, thank you so much for your beautiful addition to our program. We wish you well in the coming days and trust that all will be fine with you. I'd also like to add that anyone can join the podcast family as a volunteer. We're always on the lookout for guests, writers, editors, and producers. So feel free to contact the program, and we'll see how you can best fit with our family. And that's all for this special edition of Brief But Still Me. Please come back in 2022 for another season of programming. And remember, my friends, moving forward is not moving away. Thank you for joining us. We hope you have felt supported in your grief journey. Bereaved But Still Me is a monthly podcast, and a new episode is released on the first Thursday of each month. You can hear our podcast anywhere you normally listen to podcasts at any time. Join us again next month for a brand new episode of Bereaved But Still Me.